Hello and welcome to this presentation about social media. We're going to be talking about what patients want and why IVF physicians should care. This topic is presented today by a few of us at Vanguard Communications, an internet publishing and marketing firm that guarantees increases in new patients for medical practices. We're located in Denver, Colorado in the United States. We've been in business for 26 years and have served medical practices in the U.S. and Canada as digital content marketers. I want to introduce you to the Vanguard speakers today. My name is Stephanie Wilson. I'm the Vice President at Vanguard Communications, where I've worked for more than nine years, and I lead the client services and public relations teams, as well as oversee marketing strategy for all of our healthcare clients and our firm. Hi, I'm Celine Newberg, Client Service Manager at Vanguard Communications. I have a decade of marketing experience. The last seven years of my career have been focused solely on healthcare marketing. Hello, my name is Mallory McFarlane, and I am the Public Relations Manager at Vanguard Communications. I have over a decade of marketing PR experience, with more than half of that in the clinical marketing field. We're going to chat today about social media for medical practices by providing an overview of social media and why healthcare providers should be using it, as well as content for social media that works well to attract and engage patients, and talk about online reviews on physician rating websites. We'll start with a social media overview. Here are some example platforms you might be familiar with. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, Skyrock, and Instagram. There are many other popular social media platforms throughout the world as well. So what is social media? Really, it's about facilitating conversations online. Social media is an interactive and online platform or application. Often you know this as an app that you might use on your phone. These platforms allow users, or patients in our case, to share info, photos, videos, ideas, and online reviews. Those patient users like to interact with similar information from other users, groups, and businesses, like your medical practice. Here's why you should care about social media for your practice. On Facebook, we have 3 billion users worldwide, and that equates to about one out of every three people in the world using Facebook. Twitter has 330 million users worldwide, Instagram has 1 billion users worldwide, and YouTube, which is owned by Google, is actually the second largest search engine, second only to Google. In Western Europe, we see that 63% of adult internet users use social media at least once a month. And that matches similar stats in the US, where close to 70% of women use social media, and that's the green line here in this chart, followed closely by usage by men in the blue line. By the way, these stats were reported by the Pew Research Center in 2015 and are very likely to have increased since then, per our upward trends we're seeing here over the last decade. So why is social media important in medicine? For one, it acts as a reputation builder, it demonstrates expertise, and can be a deciding factor when patients are choosing their doctors. In IVF especially, social media is really important. In fact, the IVF patient demographic is the key target for social media use in terms of age and gender. IVF patients often are highly engaged with their IVF practices in our experience, and often those patients can be a practice's biggest fans or advocates on those social media channels. So as a healthcare provider, it's important to use social media as a tool to reach your patients. You do that by participating in online conversations that are already happening on those platforms. And what patients are really looking for on those social media conversations are communications and content that's really about them and for them. I'm going to discuss the best kinds of content for engaging patients and potential patients online. The types of content that your practice will want to focus on will include relevant health content, so information about fertility treatments, videos, baby photos, personal information about providers. If you're celebrating a birthday or an office event, you can share that information. And any newsworthy content related to your specialty. If there's a celebrity who gives birth after an IVF treatment, that is something that your practice might consider sharing on social media. As we get started, there are several terms you'll want to familiarize yourself with. Hashtags, this is the pound symbol. It's a label used on social media that'll make it easier for users to find information on a particular topic or theme. Character count. 
This counts each individual character in a post. Plainly, each letter, punctuation mark, or space is counted toward your character limit. For example, the phrase character count has 15 characters, including the space. And how often should you post? There is no magical formula. Quality content is more important than quantity. But if you're going to be setting up these platforms, you should use them. And we recommend posting at least once a week to each platform you've set up. Videos are a great way to connect with patients online. They can be shared across multiple social media channels. It is recommended with videos that you post them directly to the social media platform you're using. It's recommended that videos be less than five minutes. Two to three minute videos perform better than the five minute videos. In this example, Dr. Rank Mary shared his personal struggle with infertility on social media. Even though his video was longer than the recommended length, he was able to engage in an authentic way with potential patients. His video had more than 50,000 views on Facebook alone. After the initial publication of his video, his practice saw a 76% increase in new patient appointment requests and a 26% increase in new patient visits from the previous year. Now we're gonna discuss some individual platforms. First, we're gonna look at Instagram. Instagram is best for sharing pictures of inspirational quotes. It's another avenue to foster personal connection between the provider and the patient. Instagram accounts with less than 10,000 followers, though, can't include links in their posts. Although the max caption length for Instagram is over 2,000 characters, we found captions with between 138 and 150 characters perform better. Instagram is a platform you'll want to use hashtags on, between 5 to 10 of them. In the United States, over 33% of Instagram users are between the ages of 25 and 34 years old. Next, we're talking about Facebook. Posts that include photos and videos outperform those that don't. And while the max caption for a Facebook post is 60,000 characters, video posts do limit that character count to 90. And posts with between 40 and 80 characters perform better than posts with additional characters. While 69% of U.S. results are on Facebook, we work with fertility clinics where their Facebook followers are made up of up to 50% women between the ages of 25 and 34. Posts on Facebook that tend to perform better are news posts, stories, links to your website with relative information, blogs, and other interesting topics. Twitter is great for sharing news content. Think of Twitter as a mini blog. In addition to sharing your own content, consider sharing content that is relevant to IVF patients. Look for newsworthy articles. Think of any celebrity who's had a successful pregnancy after an IVF treatment. This is content you'll want to share on your Twitter account. While the character limit is 280 characters per post, post with between 71 and 100 characters perform best. Each tweet should be short and to the point, delivering the main message while using hashtags. It's good to use at least one to two hashtags in your Twitter posts. Engaged patients will reach out and contact you through social media channels. Next, Mallory will discuss how to respond. Let's talk about online reviews, physician rating websites, and social media inquiries. The social media platforms that we've covered thus far are considered content sharing social media. Although there are opportunities for patients to leave reviews using these platforms, such as the review option on Facebook business pages, these are often sites that are used for people to come and reach out with questions for the clinics and providers. Although most people think about platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram when talking about social media, sites such as HealthGrades, RateMDs, Yelp, and Google are also forms of social media, although these tend to fall under the physician and clinic rating category. These sites are where most patients will go to leave reviews for clinics and providers. One of the marketing terms we use at Vanguard Communications is ORM, or Online Reputation Management. This is building an online public image by responding to digital reviews and inquiries, therefore influencing search website results. So why is ORM important in medicine? 92% of internet users read reviews and 89% say that reviews influence their purchasing. Proper ORM can turn a negative review into a positive experience, often leading to an updated positive review. Staying on top of your online reputation helps to protect your brand, provide insight, and build loyalty. And last but not least, inappropriate ORM can lead to legal issues. Whether answering a question, responding to a review, or creating marketing content, there are a few major things that you shouldn't share. 
These include resharing a review without the patient's permission, sharing patient health information, or when considering professional profiles, overly religious or political views that would ostracize certain groups of patients. So let's break these down a little further. Resharing a review without the patient's permission. Receiving a review on a social site or directly to the clinic, whether anonymous or not, does not mean that you have permission then to share the review further. For example, in the US, a signed waiver is needed to receive legal approval to share that information. Medical sharing guidelines do vary by country, so make sure you know the law surrounding this topic where you operate. Sensitive patient health information, also known as protected health information or PHI. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA in the US, protects patient health information from being shared without the patient's consent. This includes name, symptoms, and clinical experience, diagnosis, as well as treatment. There are often similar rules and regulations across the world, though they vary by region. When it comes to professional profiles, we want to avoid overly political or religious views. Laying claim to political or religious views may alienate patients and prospective patients who do not share the same beliefs. Why do we respond to negative reviews on social media? It shows other people looking at the review that the clinic is responsive and accessible. It creates the opportunity to solve the issue, which may lead the reviewer to update their review with a higher rating. It can also educate the reviewer or other readers of clinic policies, insurance information, etc. There are some important do's and don'ts as we respond to negative reviews. Do respond quickly. Thank the reviewer and validate their concern. Explain any policies that may relate to the negative review. Depersonalize the experience, which means we don't say things like, we're sorry you had a long wait time, but instead we say we work hard to prevent long wait times, therefore we're not saying they were ever in the clinic. And lastly, invite the reviewer to further discuss their feedback offline. An example of a good response would be, Thank you for sharing your feedback. We are sorry to hear about the experience described in this review. We are devoted to our patient's care and success. Please contact us at, insert your number here, so we can learn more about these comments. When responding, don't become defensive, claim blame for the negative events, share protected health information, reference specific situations, or confirm the individual ever stepped foot in the establishment. An example of a response we would not want to use is, Jane, we are sorry that your IVF appointment did not go well with us. We are kind to all of our patients though, so your claim that the front staff was rude cannot be true. When it comes to inquiries that come across social media platforms, there are a few common themes. We often see questions such as, may I make an appointment? What services do you offer? How much are these services? And can you help me with whatever the issue might be? The do's and don'ts here strongly reflect what we spoke about when responding to negative reviews. Do respond quickly. Thank the person for reaching out. Direct them to a specific web page if it would be helpful. Offer the best number for them to use to contact the clinic if they need further assistance or would like to schedule a consultation. Don't give any medical advice or share any protected health information. So let's look at an example. Say Jane reached out to us on Facebook. Her message reads, Hi, my name is Jane. I am 40 and having trouble conceiving. I am thinking about IVF. How much would that cost? We've developed two answers here to give you an idea of what you should say and what you shouldn't say. So first off, answer number one. Hi Jane, IVF would definitely be the way to go since you are 40 and not getting pregnant. What other health issues do you have? What is your best contact information? Answer number two. Thank you for reaching out. Please visit company.com slash IVF to learn more about IVF options. You can also schedule a consultation at company.com slash consult. Obviously, answer number one includes personal health information. We are giving medical advice and we're also using Jane's name. This is an example of what we would not want to say. Answer number two is vague, although it does lead her to the clinic's website and the page talking about IVF treatment. It also gives her the option to call in for a consultation. And this is a much better choice. Let's recap social media for IVF practices. Social media is a great way to reach your target patients online and demonstrate why patients should choose your IVF practice. Some social media tactics we discussed included sharing content, the more personal the better, and content that performs really well includes video, images, and educational health information. It is important to remember that if you create a social page for yourself or for your practice, you should frequently post content. Don't just set it and forget it.
In contrast, what you should not share on social media are things like patient details or health information, or polarizing political or religious views that might turn certain patients away. Don't forget to monitor your social media, including those online ratings and review websites. And be sure to respond to feedback, whether it's positive or negative. Show empathy for your patients when you're interacting with them on social media. And when sharing content, provide useful, valuable information that patients want. And remember, don't be defensive. In summary, remember, be authentic, empathetic, and personal when having online conversations. Share information focused on your patients. Thank you for watching our presentation. You can find additional free practice resources about social media and other marketing tips on our website at vanguardcommunications.net forward slash IVF dash worldwide. Thank you.